Welcome everybody to Google Cloud Innovators and in Telecommunications, where we're really working on helping deliver that AI-driven telecom. And I'm excited today to have Simon Norton from Vodafone with us. Simon, welcome. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for having me. Um, so hello, everybody. I head up Vodafone's digital network and OSS practice, looking after a large traditional OSS um, base of tools. Everything that we do around digital networks, in particular focused on our partnership with Google, so that's AI, data platform, advanced analytics and automation. And I look after the network test labs if the other stuff wasn't enough as well. It does sound like enough. And, and <laughs> so Simon, when you break that down, and we've talked a lot about AI and customer experience, but how does that kind of pertain to the network and how do you bring that network aspect into the customer experience? What, how do you view well, that? I think that's a really interesting question because certainly from my perspective, I'm a huge believer that great customer experience or indeed not so great customer experience isn't driven by a singular event. It's often a linear chain of events with many variables. Now, network is obviously a huge variable within there, right? So starting from the sales experience, moving through where the people are on the right hand set or tariff, but then ultimately, why are people buying services from us? They're buying connectivity. So some of the challenges that we have as a network team is really being able to understand and pinpoint within these kind of multivariate equation exactly where we need to make our network interventions to drive great experience. So that's a challenge. Now, secondarily as well, and I mentioned the OSS base that I look after, like most telcos, we do have a fairly high degree of legacy in that base. Now, that legacy is not always easy to get the insights and the actions or that insight action cycle really, really well understood and correlated with all of the other information coming out of the IT systems, commercial systems, to be able to say, where do we need to pinpoint our interventions to improve experience? So there are a couple of quite unique challenges, I think, to networks, rather than you know, some of the more traditional challenges on the consumer or on the IT side of the equation. And, and you so Simon, that's really interesting. And so how are you thinking about AI? How are you becoming an AI-driven telecom and, and utilizing that across your business, especially in the network? Well, certainly, you know, across Vodafone, we've got a huge number of very ambitious plans, um, you know, to complement a pretty extensive traditional AI machine learning methods and really start bringing and scaling Gen AI. So huge amount ongoing across the business. But as you say, Brian, I'll zone in and focus on the network. So really our vision in terms of the application of AI and Gen AI in the network is we want to use it to help transform the way that we deliver the entire network lifecycle. So everything from how we plan our investments in the network so that we can target our investments for customer experience, for revenue growth, for churn reduction, right the way through to the way that we optimize the network. And I'm very, very excited around how Gen AI can lower the barrier to accessing very complex network data insights and reduce down that insight to, insight to action cycle time, which is so crucial to deliver the experience that our customers expect. And then as we move further through the life cycle into operations, I really think that AI operations coupled with Gen AI is going to be game changing for us. So we're really, really proud of what we've achieved so far in our AI ops journey, which started about four or five years ago, um, where we've been able to deliver some phenomenal capabilities in terms of network monitoring automation, zero touch um, trouble tickets handling, lots of stuff around field engineering. But really when Gen AI comes in is when we can't deliver a closed loop journey using the traditional methods coupled with automation, I really see Gen AI as being brilliant to co-pilot the human when they're getting involved in things like complex incident management. So putting the picture of the network data, network knowledge, previous incidents and how we solve them into the hands of that second line engineer so they can fix the problem quicker, less problems, fix more quickly, better customer experience. It becomes thing. really, really powerful, especially if you're sitting in that seat or you're in the knock and you're trying to troubleshoot for sure. And you're doing some interesting things with the device side of that too and how you're monitoring devices as well, correct? Yeah, well that's right. So um, within my team, and actually one of the digital products that we're extremely proud of, which I'm happy to say we just migrated to GCP back in December, really great, really great project, um, is called NetPerform. So what we're able to do, NetPerform is an advanced device analytics uh, capability which enables us to understand exactly how our customer from their device is experiencing our network. So we can couple that with the more traditional data feeds coming off the network customer experience management platforms, performance management platforms, and do some really cool things in terms of being able to correlate that data to deliver a more personalized experience towards our customers. And that's new data coming together. We could not do that before. 
Simply not possible previously. No, when we had previously on-prem silo deployments of performance management tools, device analytics, CEM, the ability to bring that data and correlate it together and then build applications on top for, you know, as I say, for our optimizers, for our planners, or even put some of this power into the hands of our customers for things like guided diagnostic journey, diagnostics journeys, that simply wasn't possible. That's incredible and incredible progress, and it sounds like it's moving really rapidly. What, what do you think underneath, how do you set up for that rapid growth? If we kind of peel it back architecturally, yeah as you think about things. Well, this is where I, I like to call this the unsexy hard yards, <laughs> right? So we all get very carried away talking about generative AI, AI, the applications that we're building on top. But actually, I think one of the great decisions that Vodafone made, very prescient decision, was the investment and the big bet that we made with you guys on the Google Cloud side five years ago. So where we stand today, we now have hundreds of network data sources integrated to the cloud greater than two petabytes of network data available to us at any given time. And the real power here is that we're not just doing it from the network side. So we've got our commercial data, our IT data, our customer experience data, and that enables us to mesh data sets and build really exciting products in a way that we never could before. And actually, it's also super healthy for the organization because it promotes cross-functional working and collaboration across the teams in completely new ways relative to the previous ways of working. Well, so I, I think you just mentioned a really critical piece too, and it, it's not the technology, it's how do you get teams to start to work together and leverage the technology? Is there something that you're doing at Vodafone to really increase that adoption and start to see this acceleration. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm, I'm a great believer in it. I think it's a maxim that you guys use a lot, put smart, creative people together and get out of the way, right? Yeah, and right. I think that's really important. And as leaders, that we allow the teams to have the creativity to do that. And I think there's one area that I'd really highlight here, and it's around our smart capex, or what we're now evolving to Gen AI-powered next generation network investment. You cannot build a product like that without having data products from commercial, customer experience feeds, revenue per site information, all of the network data. That requires teams to work in a fundamentally different way, bringing together data sets, but also bringing together experts, uh, um, expertise, because my team are not necessarily the most expert on some of the commercial data sets, and vice versa when it comes to commercial on the network data sets. So building out these cross-functional teams and promoting that culture of collaboration and data sharing, rather than kind of jealously guarding one's data because data equals power. If you do that, you get it right, you get incredible results. Breaking down those barriers becomes really critical and creating that collaboration. Smart people in silos, not so good. Exactly. Smart people working to get together is tremendous. I agree more. So if we think about things in two years or three years, where would your business be? Where will it be? Well, I'm extremely ambitious and we've got some very, very bold plans on the, um, on the, on the AI side of things. So if I start from the, yeah, yeah, well, actually, let me start from the, from the base. So in three years' time, we will have concluded our largest ever program of OSS change. And whilst we get very excited about the cloud, the data layer, Gen AI, we cannot ignore the underlying OSS because it's mission critical in its nature. And if we let the legacy persist, then we will struggle to achieve everything that we can as we move up through the architecture. So in three years' time, we will have finished our OSS simplification and modernization program and reduced our legacy base in Vodafone by over 600 tools and applications. That's massive, super strong foundations. 600 tools and applications being reduced down. Yep, so we've reduced our total, but total volume down by 600 tools and applications. Wow. So about a 50% reduction in the absolute number of OSS tools that we've got. And we're doing that, and actually we're doing a lot of that work by working with you guys. So I want to give one really good example I'm proud of. So traditionally, across our markets, we had multiple network performance management solutions, lots of proprietary solutions, often different solutions per network domain. Now, what we're doing in Vodafone is we created this product called Unified Performance Management. That's enabling us to remove over 100 traditional PM systems, replace them with a unified system where ultimately all of our network performance data will be presented in the Google Cloud and crucially made accessible to be consumed in AI models in other products as well. So that's a really neat example around how we're leveraging the Google investment, everything that we can do on AI, but also how it can help us to power simplification of the more traditional OSS. Creating a huge amount of operational efficiency Absolutely. and really helping drive that business forward and being creative on top of that. Well, that's it. And you think it creates a virtuous circle because the alternative, and we had to, if we had to integrate over 100 plus data sources, economically that becomes challenging. 
it becomes very challenging from an overall data quality perspective as well, and data consistency perspective. So you can see what we're trying to create here. We're trying to create this virtuous circle. Um, you know, Google Cloud plays an absolutely massive role there, both from the data ocean side of things, but also the AI platform ecosystem that we've built up with you. Well, I tell you what, Simon, it's been a pleasure having you here. And we're really excited about the partnership we've had with you over the past years. It's not something that started yesterday. We built that foundation with you and in conjunction with you. And uh, we really appreciate that partnership. Well, thank you, Brian. I'm really looking forward to the future and this brave new world of everything that we're going to do with generative AI over the next year or two. Simon, it is a brave new world. And thanks again. Thanks, Steve. That's it for now for Google Cloud Innovators in Telecommunications.